Now, BBC Radio Leicester has learned that there are fears for music provision across our county and city and for the future of the Leicestershire Schools Symphony Orchestra, the LSSO. In a joint statement, Leicester City Council and County Hall have admitted that they're looking at making changes to the current Leicestershire arts system. Amongst the secretive proposals, teachers of instruments from trumpets to tubers and violins to violas could be forced to become self-employed, leading to concerns that the best instructors will abandon our area. On Saturday morning orchestra meetings, such seen as crucial to continuing the success of the orchestra, which of course they feed, could be ditched. Well, BBC Radio Leicester's Dave Thompson has been to see Stephen Kalo, a current Leicestershire arts student. <laughs> Hi, I'm Stephen. I play the tuba. I have grade 8 distinction on the tuba and I'm a student at Leicester Arts. Well, uh, I have been in Leicester Arts for 10, 10 plus years now, maybe 11 years. Gone right from the beginner band right to the top. Uh, wind band and I now play with the orchestra. The concerts that I've played in over my time in Leicester Arts have been, I mean, amazing opportunities really. De Montfort Hall is an iconic venue in Leicester for musicians to play. I mean, as a small child it's really daunting to be on the stage there with a thousand plus people in the audience and it's really, yeah, it's, I mean, it is, it's good. It's a really good experience, everything. All the practicing or the rehearsing and working as a team as well to get the best out of yourselves. For me, music's been the central part of my upbringing, really. I'm, I've always done it. I'm actually studying to become a professional player. I mean, at the moment, I'm going for auditions for Music College, hopefully to go there in September. Stephen's dad, Robert, is the manager of Leicester's Bardi Symphony Orchestra. He went through the Leicestershire Arts programme himself, starting during the 1970s. I'm from Leicestershire, born and bred, and my family can go back a long time. I think it's the jewel in Leicestershire, Leicester's crown, to do the music making and youth. I was just so lucky in the 70s, I know the generations before in the 60s when Eric Pinkett started it and then right through to my son now, dedicated staff giving their time to help. I'm sure none of the children that have been through Leicester Arts for all these times will ever forget the time playing in orchestras and bands playing together. I think any parent would be very worried that this system would stop, it'd be, it'd be terrible. To cut music and arts and culture is a very difficult thing. It should be part of growing up, certainly as a child, to experience art, music and anything like that. If music was cut, I think it would be disastrous because it's, I think it's such an important for people to express themselves. I mean, if I hadn't had music growing up, then I, I don't know what I would have done. Well, that's Stephen and Robert Kahlo from Obi rounding off that report from BBC Radio Leicester's Dave Thompson. Uh, well, the joint statement that BBC Radio Leicester has obtained from Leicester City and Leicester County Councils, so they have begun a consultation process on the future shape of the music service for schools in the area, and that they're hoping that this will be more flexible, sustainable and cost-effective. But what are the side effects of that going to be? Well, joining us now is a former player with the Leicester School Symphony Orchestra, John Whitmore. John, good morning. Good morning. What's Leicester like today? It's freezing in Oldham. Dreadful. It, it's horrible here too. <laughs> uh, so listen, what, what effect do you think these proposals are going to have? Well, can I say, I spoke to Sandy Hay, the head of music yesterday, just to forewarn him I was doing this. I thought that was the right thing to do. And the, the knock-on effect has been the press statement, which you just read out. Now, there are two main pillars to the music service. One is the team of 70 peripatetic teachers that spend all the time, every day, day in, day out in schools. And these teachers are professionals. They're not self-employed. They're on teachers' pay and conditions. And that is the key. These are top-notch people. And they deliver whole school programs for wider opportunities, group sessions, but really crucially for the LSSO, they do one-to-ones because there's no way you can get from, say, grade four to grade eight to get into the LSSO. But if these, well, how will these proposals affect that, though? Well, they will destroy it, in my opinion. They really will, because let, let's put it this way. Let, let's assume these 70 people are self-employed. I've also heard, and I may be wrong here, that one-to-one -one tuition will not continue. That will kill the LSSO, because the, the kids will get to grade four, and then they'll 
basically stick at that level. One-to-one -one is essential. If you go self-employed, you'll not attract professional young people into the system. Now, in Derbyshire they do this, and Derbyshire is not noted for its music. It's not in the same class as Leicester. They have a turnover of 20% with their Perry staff. That's no good for the children. And where, where's the control? Where's the, the, the network? Where, where is the future for going down this route? How can you actually earn a decent living being self-employed for 30 weeks a year, going around from school to school? It's outrageous. It cannot work. John, good to talk to you this morning. That's John Whitmore from, uh, he was a former player with the Leicestershire School Symphony Orchestra joining us here on BBC Radio Leicester.